Hey sewing friends, Cherie here from Cherie's Alchemy and I'm back today to share with you all the patterns that I've chosen for my Make 9 2021. Now the Make 9 challenge I believe started as an Instagram challenge and I'll put a link in the description box below um, to the Instagram page uh, and you can of course go on to Instagram as well as on YouTube and search that hashtag. Uh, you can search Make 9 and you can search Make 9 2021 to see this year's uh, participants in their makes. Um, I think you'll see more on Instagram than on YouTube, but it's just a really fun way for um, makers to challenge themselves to select nine projects that they want to complete uh, in a year. And it varies. I mean, there are knitters that are participating painters, jewelry makers, quilters, sewers, uh, makers in general. And you'll find a lot of people, at least I've seen a lot of people on Instagram that are doing a mixture of projects. Um, so they might have some knitting projects, some quilting projects, as well as some sewing projects. Um, I knit also, but I decided not to put any knitting projects into my Make Nine this year. I was tempted because I really do have a, a lot of... Um, expensive <laughs> a really nice yarn that is just sitting that I need to knit up um I don't like knitting in the summer I only like knitting when it's cold outside um, but now I'm sewing a lot more and so I prefer sewing over knitting um so I am going to try to start scheduling those in um some knitting projects in but I didn't want to put that um pressure on myself to have certain projects because I'm a really slow knitter, especially for larger projects. And those are the kind of projects that I'm trying to focus on, some sweaters, some large blankets. Um, and it could take me a year to knit <laughs> one blanket. Uh, so anyway, my projects for the Make 9 2021 are a mixture of sewing and quilting projects. So I uh, shared my, my Make 9 grid on Instagram. Um, and I'll try and pop a picture here um, showing you my grid. And now let's go through the individual projects. So I'm going to start with the make that I've actually already completed. I completed this one, I think, already in January. Um, it's, it's, it's a pattern that I've had probably for two years. And I've seen so many gorgeous versions of this on Instagram. And I kept, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to make it. Oh, I'm going to make it. But, you know, it's one of those, um, it's one of those projects where I really wanted to have like the right fabric, but then it uses so much fabric that I didn't want to like use that beautiful fabric and then not have it turn out right. So I kind of waffled back and forth. And so it was a good project to put on the list. So I've made it up. I've made it in a fabric that I like, but it's not the main fabric that I wanted to use. Um, so basically I have a wearable twill now because it turned out great. And this is definitely a dress that I'm going to be making again this year. So it is the ever popular Elodie dress. And this is a pattern from, I think this is closet case patterns. Yes. I think they're called closet core now. Um, let me take this out of um, the packaging. So here's the color envelope, and I made this longer version, um, and I absolutely love it. I'll pop a picture. Um, I think I've only photographed it from the bodice up, but I'll pop a picture here. But I'm this will be one of the first reviews that I do, uh, hopefully coming up in the next week or two, so you can see me wearing it and see the full dress. Here's the back. Okay, so I was excited to get one project down. I was on a roll and then I got distracted. <laughs> but this month I am, well, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be working on two uh, of the Make Nine projects simultaneously. So I'm going to be cutting out this one. I need a, a nice short a uh, trench style coat in my wardrobe uh, for spring. I have a lot of heavy winter coats 
Um, I have a lot of cardigans and stuff like that. I don't have a lot. I think I have one light tan trench coat and it's not short, it's longer. So I like this for the car. I want to make it in a darker fabric. I might even be making one in navy at some point, but the fabric that I have right now is black. Um, so I'm looking forward to make this. This is a Burderick pattern, Burderick 6331. And it's from the um, Liesl Gibson collection, Lizette. Uh, this is her pattern collection that she does for Butterick. Um, this is actually a great pattern. I might make those pants too at some point, but a really good looking pair of uh, slacks, full uh, ankle length as well as cropped. I mean, that's just super cute. And I actually am kind of digging um, this jacket here, you know, with the sleeves kind of rolled up and held in place with the tabs. So this will be my make nine number two. And then the other one that I'm working on over the next month is this Berta pattern. Um, I've mentioned several times I don't do jumpsuits. And I just love this. And I've had this pattern for years. I just think, you know, for just being at home, my issue with jumpsuits is being out in public and having to use the restroom. Like, what do you do? Um, but I'm home so much now that this is completely fine. So I'm going to make this. I don't. I haven't decided the sleeve length yet. Probably the sleeve length. Um, but I just love just the simple draping. It's a very easy pattern with the exception that it does have a zipper. Um, so if you're new to zippers, that might be a bit of a challenge. But otherwise, it just has that wrap front elastic at the waist. I feel like it's just a flattering, sophisticated look. Um, so this will be, uh, this is up in the queue. I'll be cutting those out in the next day or two. So number four, pattern number four. I'm probably not going to do this one till the fall because as you can see, it's a winter coat. Ever since I started sewing when I was 12, I became a pattern and fabric collector. So my, I have a lot of older out of print patterns, um, you know, cause I did like I do here. I go to a sale, I buy, you know, 20 patterns and then maybe I sew two of them. So I am trying to force myself to go back into my archive and pull out some of these, you know, older patterns that really are timeless in their styling and uh, sew those up. So this is one of them. I have a lot of, uh, vintage Donna Karen patterns and she's just one of my favorite designers in general you can see the line drawings but I just think this is a beautiful beautiful coat pattern if you want to try and search for this pattern you know sometimes you can find these older patterns on Etsy and eBay you know they're sometimes marked up uh, quite significantly but sometimes you just you know, you find people that are de-stashing um, and they're just trying to get rid of them. And so if you want to search for this particular pattern, this is Vogue 1365. And let me see, sometimes they have a date. This is from 2013. This is from 2013, okay? So this is not vintage, it's just older. So that was Vogue 1365. Project number five is this little carry-all. Um, and I've already actually made the larger travel bag. So I want to make the little carry-on, the little carry-all bag in the same fabrics that I have a coordinated set. Because like a lot of you, when the world opens back up again, I'm out. <laughs> like I will be doing weekend trips and traveling as much as possible uh, when we can all get back to normal. So I just, I figured, you know, I, this is again a pattern I've been wanting to make for years. Um, and so I put this on my list to force me to go ahead and finally get that made. And just to have something besides apparel to work on. Um, yeah, I love this pattern. I love all of Amy Butler's patterns. 
And I used to have a brick and mortar fabric shop in Michigan. And Amy's patterns were by far the most popular patterns that I carried in my shop. And this is funny because I've taught this class. I taught this class in my shop, I don't know how many times, as well as the one for the larger travel bag. The larger travel bag, I the, the bag that I have for myself is the sample that I made for the class. Um, but I taught this class a lot, but I never made my own. So I'm looking forward to sewing that. Pattern number six, jeans. I don't wear jeans that much. I like slacks and I just find, and here's the thing, right? For jeans to be really comfortable, it has to be like a really good denim with the right amount of stretch, the right kind of fit. And to have fitted jeans like this, like, you know, most of us don't have standard bodies. And so my issue was always that once I find jeans that fit me well in my, you know, full derriere, my thighs and hips, the waist is way too big. And I do not like doing any alterations. I feel like once I've bought something, like, I don't want to spend two hours, three hours picking seams apart to modify it. And so... um I just don't even bother with jeans. I have, like I said, a few pair that fit really well. I don't wear them that much, so they've lasted forever. Um, but I want to try and make myself some jeans. I think this would be, you know, also just a good project to challenge myself to do something that I just would not ordinarily do. Like, I would not normally put that much time into something so casual. You know what I mean? So, um... Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And I should say one of the big reasons is I kind of want some non-denim colored jeans. Like I would love to to have like a really cool denim. And actually I have some really cool printed denim. I have some really cool embroidered denim. And I think that's what I'm going to use um, so that I can sew that up out of my stash and hopefully make a really well-fitted cool pair of jeans. So I got this pattern also. This is another uh, closet core pattern. These jeans are called the ginger jeans. Very popular jeans um, for sewists on Instagram. And that's why I bought the pattern. I kept seeing people posting these ginger jeans and they look so good. And I'm like, okay, let me get that pattern. So I'm looking forward to trying these. Um, when you buy the pattern, I bought this from the website directly. And they also sell with the patterns, the, the denim kits. So it comes with the zipper and the, um, you know, that metal button closure. That's a true denim style. So I did go ahead and pick that kit up. You know, it was like six or nine bucks so that I can make them really true, true jeans. So I'm looking forward to that one. And then this is the kind of jean that I really like, kind of like a mommy jean fit. Only thing I don't know... Once I got this pattern, I looked at it. I'm like, it looks a little low-waisted. I'm not sure. But that's the beauty of sewing it. Yeah, these are called boyfriend jeans. It's the beauty of sewing it yourself. Yeah, I can modify that if I need to. But if you look here, I mean, you know, she looks a little ample in the drawing. So hopefully there's some features built in um, where these will fit well over curves. So we'll see. These, these two denim patterns, I'm definitely going to do mock-ups of these first. Whoops. Going to do mock-ups of these before I cut into my fabric for sure. Um, and this one they call the Morgan jean, the Morgan boyfriend jean. And same thing, I got the kit, I got the denim kit to go along with this as well. Okay, patterns number eight and nine are quilt projects. Um, my son is heading off to college in the fall. He'll be a freshman. I have a daughter that will be going into her junior year of college. And I wanna make both of them quilts um, that they can take off to school with them. I haven't selected any of the fabrics uh, whatsoever yet, but I know for my daughter, I want to make her this quilt. I love this Ecat 
butterfly pattern. I just think this is so unique and so cool. She loves butterflies. Um, I'm probably going to pick a different colorway because I want it to match her bedding. So it will have that yellow in it. Um, I'm not sure. That's that's. I'm not at that step yet. But you need several different, um, you know, fabrics for this. So this will be a fun way to use up some of the cottons that I have in my stash. This um, pattern is designed to finish as a 42 by 42. So I'm gonna have to do some math to change the dimensions because I, I want her quilt to be a different size. Um, yeah, so I just love this quilt. This is um, from the quilt book from Tula Pink and Angela Waters. So Tula, I think, designed the quilt and did the quilt. And Angela does the quilting. So Tula does the patchwork. Angela does the quilting. I think that's how it works. And it's filled with like lots and lots and lots of just really gorgeous modern quilts. I might actually use, if I have time to do a second quilt for her, there's another quilt pattern in here that I really like. Um, so yeah, that'll be project number eight. And then project number nine. Project number nine is going to come from this book. This book is called The Improv Handbook for Modern Quilters. Um, and it's by Cheryl Lynn Wood. And the quilt, did I lose my tab? This book is more about inspiration. And so I'm not going to follow the exact um, pattern in this book. There's, there's no pattern in here that I want to use, but it's more the concept. And the main thing that I want to um, study from this book and practice, I've, I've made a lot of patchwork quilts in my life, but I've never done any with curved pieces. And that's the technique that I want to uh, learn. I want to learn how to sew curves. So this is the one. I love this, this sort of thought, right? Improvisational um, patchwork piecing, but then curves. And this book is filled with um, great directions on how to achieve that. I'm trying to quickly find the one quilt that I used in my grid. You know, look at that. Just something really fun and different. I would use, you know, calmer, here it is. This was the quilt that, um, that caught my eye, you know? So I wanna do something with some curves. So I'm not sure which uh, quilt I will end up, I love this too. I would make this for myself to hang on my wall in my studio. Um, but I chose this, um, really again, like I said, to, uh, learn how to make quilts with curves. So that'll be project number nine. The two quilts I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to work on those while I'm working on other things because they will, uh, take me a fair amount of time, um, I like getting inspiration from quilts, but when I sit down, I always like, I don't know, I just feel like it's one of those things. Um, and I'm just like that in general. Like I always wanna kind of do my own thing at some point. Um, so I love it for the techniques. That moth quilt, I will follow that grid um, pretty precisely to get the moth, um, the moth uh, ikat design going. But whatever I put around the border to make it a larger quilt for my daughter's twin size bed, you know, I'll get to play around with that and, and express a little creativity of my own there. So I'm looking forward to uh, doing those two projects. So again, let me pop the picture of my Make Nine grid here. I'll link to my Instagram post uh, in the description box. And I'll throw the hashtag in as well that you guys can search to see um, what other people are working on for this year. Uh, please share with us if you've done the Make Nine before, um, if you're participating this year, 
let us know so we can go and, you know, see which projects and patterns you've chosen. Um, and let me know your thoughts um, on the patterns that I chose. You know, have you made jeans before? Have you made any of these patterns before? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications. Um, I do have some sew alongs um, that I'm going to go ahead and work on. But before that, I have some more um, hauls to share and I have some more pattern reviews. This is a top that I made. I will throw the pattern here and maybe a little picture from Instagram here and I'll put that in the description box below. Super easy blouse. I'm, I followed the measurements on the pattern and it came out, I think, like a size or two too big. I mean, I have a lot of fabric here, um, but it's very comfortable and I'm not mad at it. Um, I do plan on making it again and I'll definitely be making it uh, smaller, um, but super easy, great use of a nice, you know, flowy rayon fabric. Um, so I do have a fair number of sewing reviews to share with you guys. And then I'll start in with some sew alongs. So if you like that kind of content, please like and subscribe. Please share my channel with any friends you have that are also interested in this kind of content. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here on YouTube again soon. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye.